Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the April 5th, 2016 meeting of the Joint Town Council Parking Authority for the Town of Los Gatos. If you haven't already done so, please silence your devices. And uh, Madam Clerk, I'm going to have you call the roll, but I'm going to note for the record that uh, Council Member Leonardis uh, had to go to the East Coast on family matters and so will not be with us this evening. Madam Clerk. Thank you and good evening. Council Member Marcia Jensen. Here. Council Member Rob Rennie. Here. Council Member Steve Leonardis. Vice Mayor Mariko Sayak. Here. Mayor and Chair Barbara Spector. Here. At this point, we're going to be uh, pledge, uh, pledging allegiance to the flag, but we always do that under the leadership of a student from the town of Los Gatos. And so this evening, I would like Lavana Rose Gashuri to join me up here. Would you come over here so your mother gets a, a good shot of you on her video there? Let me tell you a little bit as to why Lavana was chosen uh, for this honor this evening. She is a uh, third grader at uh, Yavna School, and she, she, we found out about her that she likes dancing and singing and playing the guitar. But that's what, you know, the town staff and the school staff sent to me. But I wanted to know a little bit more about her. So I said, what's the most fun thing you did this past weekend? And she said, well, I went and I spent the evening at my friend's house. And I said, and what did you do there that was fun? She goes, I got a bug in my eye. I go, okay. Uh, <laughs> and so I was getting, waiting for the fun of it and only to find out that it was only until the next morning that she got the bug out. Uh, and so this is a very interesting young woman who thinks that weird things are fun. Having said that, I'm going to give her the microphone and ask you all to stand and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let's give her a round of applause. Thank her with another round of applause. Well, for those of you who may not know, April is National Poetry Month. And so uh, in celebration of National Poetry Month within the town of Los Gatos, uh, I have prepared a proclamation. Uh, and I'm going to ask our poet laureate, Stan Garber, to join me up here to receive the proclamation. And I think he has a few words to share with us. You want the mic? I would imagine. The girl who, who um, did the pledge, Lavana, she had a 24 hour bug. <laughs> I, I couldn't help myself. Um, part of the reason that, that you serve on the town council is because you have something to say. And part of the reason that people step up to these microphones is because they have something to say. And part of the reason that I write poetry is because I have something to say. Um, 
When I interviewed to become Poet Laureate, I, I, I said I wanted to write poetry about people from the town. And uh, um, I wanted Mayor Spector and the others to suggest people in town who I could interview, write poetry about, and then come here and honor them. Well, it's April, National Poetry Month, and I've written my first poem to honor a citizen of Los Gatos, Fong Nguyen, the proprietor at Los Gatos Auto Care. I'm going I'm to read it to you. Her car was making a peculiar noise. She didn't know what was wrong, so she drove to San Benito and Nine to make an appointment with Fong. He'd diagnose it, he'd figure it out, see what the job would require, maybe a pump, a belt or a hose, or maybe she had a loose wire. And he'd get right to it, take care of it fast, charge her a reasonable price. She had no fear of being ripped off or having to bring it back twice. Because Fong has a talent, and he's a good man, who can fix any car that he sees. And with so many vehicles parked around his place, he still won't lose track of your keys. He's a refugee from Vietnam. His life had its challenges there. So Fong taught himself how to fix cars, a way to escape the nightmare. And come to Las Gatas, open a business, teach auto repair to a team, and work every day from 8 until 8, because that's his American dream. And, and he was too humble to come here to actually hear it. I read it to him, and when I, get, when I read it to him, he took a copy, and he grabbed it, and he ran off with it with a smile on his face. I think he liked it. And during my term as Poet Laureate, I'd like to honor as many people in town as I possibly can. Um, um, so as you know, April is also the start of baseball season. And County Supervisor Wasserman asked me to write a poem for the invocation for the last County Supervisors meeting. This was a big deal to me. And, um, and so I wrote a poem that I really like. It, it's called, That Pine Tar Smell of Love. And it just, I just like it. I want to read it to you. I, I got an email that said I couldn't go on for more than five minutes. Okay. 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 Sure, there's summer, winter, spring, and fall, but those aren't the only seasons. The times of year get parceled oddly, depending on the reason. For some, the calendar's fiscal. For others, it's for school. The Gregorians and the Julians each follow a separate rule. But there's only one calendar, only one season, only one that matters. It's the one when bats are swung and balls are thrown past batters. And sometimes, if you listen closely, you'll hear a most distinctive snap, causing you to look around, maybe doff your cap. And instinctively, you touch your nose, tug upon your ear, and look to get into a game, because it's that time of year. Baseball season has arrived. Get your tickets, grab a glove. It's more than just the American pastime. It's that pine tar smell of love. <laughs> Finally, <laughs> I'd just like to say that um, as Poet Laureate, I have been invited to recite poetry on May the 5th, Cinco de Mayo, at the Hammer Theater in San Jose with the U.S. Poet Laureate, Juan Felipe Herrera. Local Poet Laureates, yeah, I'll take that. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty excited about this. Um, local Poet Laureates read from 8.30 to 9.30, and then, and then Juan Felipe Herrera will read his poetry at 9.30. So I invite you to come. And hey, can you tell how excited I am to be Poet Laureate? Woo! Thank you very much. Oh, OK. You're very welcome. And he almost made it in five minutes. So thanks. And, and not only that, but you have the opening the regular games of the season starting yesterday. So your timing couldn't be much better. I went a little bit out of order because I thought it would be more fun to get the ceremonial stuff done before we get into the business of uh, the council. And the first uh, formal item on our agenda are the board commission committee appointments. Uh, and I will ask 
either the town attorney or the clerk to explain how we will be proceeding this evening because we have uh, a couple uh, changes in our process and plus we have the issue of having four council people here instead of five. So whoever is going to let us know what we're going to do. Thank you, Mayor. See, the appointment, the appointment process shall proceed as follows. The clerk will be announcing the board's commissions and committees along with the number of vacancies and number of applicants who have applied to the positions and the number of votes allowed by each council member. The clerk will then announce each applicant and ask for a vote by show of hands. Each town council member's hand shall remain up until the clerk publicly announces the name of each town council member voting in favor of the applicant. Once council has completed the voting process for the commission, the clerk will recap the vote count and announce the applicant or applicants who have been selected to that position. In order for a commission candidate to be appointed, a majority vote, three or more, must occur. In the event of a tie, a runoff vote shall be conducted of only the applicants receiving the highest number of votes from the previous round. This shall continue until a majority consensus of an applicant is reached for the number of vacancies to be filled. In the event of an unbreakable tie, the appointment process will be continued until the next meeting. The process will continue for each board, commission, and committee during the appointment process. Are there any questions? So we'll begin with the Arts and Culture Commission. The ballot has been modified to reflect the three applicants who interviewed tonight. As a reminder, applicant Peter Dominic has applied for the Arts and Culture Commission and the General Plan Commission and may only be appointed to one commission. Those in favor of Peter Dominic for the Arts and Culture Commission, please raise your hand. So Mayor Spector and Vice Mayor Syok. Those in favor of Carol Waite, please raise your hand. Mayor Spector and Councilman Rennie. Those in favor of Ellis Weaker, please raise your hand. Councilman Rennie, Councilman Jensen, and Vice Mayor Sayok. So Ellis Weaker is appointed to the Arts and Culture Commission, and we have a tie between Peter Dominic and Carol Waite. I have a procedural question. I, maybe I missed this in the instructions. Are we not allowed to vote for someone who did not was not able to attend the interview? The name yes. was not called. Correct. Yes. So you, they did. Not we are not allowed. Not allowed. Even though we think that they might be qualified. The, the town um, appointment resolution states that they must be present for the interview. Okay. So we will do a tie, uh, or excuse me, a tie um, breaker for um, Peter and Carol. So those in favor of Peter Dominic, please raise your hand. So Council Member Jensen and Council Member, uh, excuse me, Vice Mayor Syok. Those in favor of Carol Waite. Mayor Spector and Councilman Rennie. So we still have a tie. So we will continue this one to the April 19th meeting. Yeah, I have a question. Uh, we, we did say that if there were a tie, uh, we would continue this to April 19th. What I had not anticipated is a, a different, you know, a tie with different people. Uh, so I look to the town attorney as to whether we should do one more tie-off or should wait till the 19th. So you've already done your tie-off and there's a tie on the voting. If you someone wants to reconsider their vote and pick someone tonight, you can do that and we could call the names again or we'll wait till the April 19th when Council Member Leonardis is here. All right, so uh, two things. First of all, anybody uh, want to reconsider on the vote we just took? 
Seeing no one. Uh, what we did, uh, because uh, Mr. Leonardis wasn't here for the interviews, is we taped them, and he will be listening to the interviews uh, before April 19th meeting when we will be doing uh, the vote on, uh, at a minimum, the Arts and Culture Commission again. Madam Clerk. For the General Plan Committee. Um, as a reminder, Jeffrey Barnett has applied for the General Plan Committee and the Transportation and Parking Commission and may only be appointed to one commission. And Peter Dominic, again, was um, applied for both the Arts and Culture and the General Plan Commission, but was not appointed to the Arts and Culture Commission, so he is still eligible for this one. So each council member may have one vote. There's one vacancy and four applicants. First applicant is Jeffrey Barnett. Council Member Jensen, Council Member Rennie, Mayor Spector, and Vice Mayor Sayok. Peter Dominic. Okay, no votes. Judith Manzi. No votes. John Whitkin. No votes. Jeffrey Barnett is appointed to the General Plan Committee. For the Transportation and Parking Commission, this ballot has been modified to reflect the applicants who interviewed tonight. Carrie Stivaletti did not interview, so she is not eligible to be appointed. Jeffrey Barnett was appointed to the General Plan Committee, so he is not eligible for this committee, so he will be not, not be called. Those in favor of Scott Kapliner, please raise your hand. Mayor Spector. Those in favor of Mark Car Carnathan, please raise your hand. No votes. Those in favor of Megan Crummett, please raise your hand. Council Member Jensen, Council Member Rennie, Mayor Spector, and Vice Mayor Sayok. Those in favor of Job Moore, please raise your hand. No votes. Those in favor of Jan Nordmo, please raise your hand. Council Member Jensen, Council Member Rennie, Mayor Spector and Vice Mayor Sayok. Those in favor of Andy Swing, please raise your hand. Council Member Jensen, Council Member Rennie, and Vice Mayor Sayok. So Megan Crummett, Jan Nordmo, and Andy Swing are appointed to the Transportation and Parking Commission. Thank you. Thank all of you who applied. Congratulations to all of you who have been appointed. Uh, and as I noted, we will be continuing the uh, voting at our next meeting when uh, Council Member Leonardis will be able to join us. At this point on our agenda, we have our council town manager reports, uh, starting with the uh, council member Jensen. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I have nothing to report. Mr. Rennie. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I have three items to report. On March 23rd, I attended Jim Bell's Senate District's Women of Silicon Valley Awards. On March 29th, I attended the Chamber's Biz to Biz networking lunch at Testarossa. And on March 30th, I attended the police recognition um, lunch put on by the Foundation at St. Mary's. Thank you. Um, since the last meeting uh, on behalf of the town, uh, I participated in the ribbon cutting for new business nannies and tutors on Harwood and Blossom Hill. Uh, and I also attended the West Valley North County 
Silicon Valley Leadership Group uh, meeting on transportation. At that time, the Silicon Valley Leadership Group announced that it was uh, taking its tax allocation to its entire board for approval, and after that occurred, they will be going to the VTA for approval. Ms. Sayak. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, since our last meeting on March 18th, I represented the town on, for the West Valley Mayor's Manager's Meeting. On 19, March 19 was the Little League opening day. Uh, March 22nd, Councilman Leonardis and I were at the Ad Hoc Citizen Committee meeting. Um, for a reminder, this is the committee that is looking at additional revenue for the town for infrastructure improvements. That is a public meeting. Um, March 23, West and North Valley Mayor Regional Transportation meeting. Uh, March 24, Councilwoman Jensen and I had a policy committee meeting, and that is also open to the public. And on March 28, we did receive a delegation from Hidoyoshi, Japan. So uh, three students and three staff um, were in town visiting uh, the library, the high school, as well as council chambers. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you all. Manager Matters. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, first, I'd like to announce that we have a really exciting event coming up on April 24th, Spring into Green. This is our annual sustainability event where we celebrate Arbor Day as well as other um, things. We've got great programming set up and we encourage the community to join us. At this time, I'd also like to do our quarterly staff recognition. We are recognizing a really special team this evening that provides frontline service uh, to the town council. And I'd like to invite up Shelley Neese, Shannon Lombardo, and uh, Linda Seastrom to join me here to receive the uh, manager's award for recognition. We appreciate all your service to our community and to our town council. Uh, this is a team that has done a lot of work for our community, and we have flowers for each of you as well. There you are, Shelley, Shannon, and for Linda as well. So in addition to being at our front desk every uh, day of the week to answer questions for our community and help them navigate our process and help our um, new commission members, they also do all of the hard work behind each council packet. Uh, Shelly's been with the organization for about 19 years, Linda for about 15, and Shannon's a relatively new team member but has really jumped in and has done fabulous work. So please join me in recognizing the great staff work of this team. Manager Matters, anything further? No, thank you. All right, now we are on the consent calendar portion of our agenda. Uh, this evening, our consent calendar consists of agenda items one through seven. The way this works is that if anybody on the council wishes to remove an item from the consent calendar, it will be heard in its normal order. Same thing with if anyone from the com uh, community wants to remove an item from the consent calendar. So starting with the council, does anyone wish to remove an item from the consent calendar? Mr. Rennie. Thank you, Mayor Spector. Um, I considered removing item number two, the bicycle pedestrian plan. Um, I had several questions, which most of which were answered in the um, addenda, uh, desk item. Um, I also wanted to make some comments before we vote if nobody's going to pull this item. Let me find out. Is there anybody from the audience that wishes to pull an item from the consent calendar? No cards, no one coming forward. So before we vote, Mr. Rennie, would you like to make your comments? Um, Ms. Sayer. Yes, I'm Ms. sorry. Sayer. Um, actually, I also had several questions on um, item two, which were answered by uh, the addendum. But um, considering I had some questions, and it sounds like Councilman Rennie does as well, I'd like to pull it and see if there's further discussion. All right, so we have agenda item two that has been pulled from the consent calendar. Uh, and so I'm looking for a motion for agenda items one through seven, exclusive of two. Ms. Jensen? 
So moved for approval on the consent calendar with the conditions contained in the reports. Second. Discussion, hearing none, all in favor, aye. aye. Opposed, passes unanimously. We will now go to agenda item two, the bicycle and pedestrian master plan. Staff report. Good evening, Matt. Good evening, Matt Morley, Director of Parks and Public Works. You have our staff report in your packet. This is uh, an exciting program for us, the uh, beginning of a bicycle and pedestrian master plan for the town. Uh, we brought this to you earlier in the year for, uh, to provide information on the, the scope of the RFP and have since moved forward and are looking for uh, the award uh, for the consultant agreement to move this uh, forward through, uh, through the rest of the, the process of establishing the plan. Um, with that, that concludes the report, and I am here for questions. Thank you very much. Do we have questions? Mr. Rennie. Thank you, Mayor Spector. I'll, I'll start. Um, so one, I, one question I think was answered was, um, when I looked at the timeline when they were going to do their work, it said they were going to do their analysis in June, which didn't make sense to me because the, the schools aren't in session in June. Um, I've seen that we have a traffic report being generated around schools, and that I assume that data would be shared. Um, do you, do you, is that correct? You're absolutely correct. We'll be um, incorporating the data on the specific um, study that we're doing currently around the schools, which will have detailed information for that will feed into the overall bicycle and pedestrian master plan. Uh, the overall plan will also include um, our intent is to get that kicked off before the school, uh, the school that's out for the summer. So that will allow for some additional incorporation of information uh, through that period as well as through the summer. And we'll also, as necessary, be able to come back in, in the fall and do additional data collection. Follow up. Mr. Rennie. Thank you, Mayor Spector. Um, second question. So um, since it is being done in June, I think there's an opportunity to measure during the beach traffic um, also is, you know, whether they decide to do something with it or not is a different story. But I think the, are they considering to measure on a Saturday afternoon? Um, so it, the measures would occur on the weekend during the summer for sure because that, uh, that significantly affects the, the pedestrian element, especially with when, when folks are out and about. We hadn't considered the connection to, uh, to the beach traffic, but um, certainly the, that overlap is very easy, easy to achieve. Thank you. Other questions? Sayak? Thank you, Mr. Morley. Um, as I mentioned, I did have several questions. Um, and as you mentioned, it's a fairly important uh, project, and it's exciting for all of us. And so I just want to make sure with the June timeline that there is adequate opportunities for public workshops, um, that it does involve the schools, particularly since a lot of them um, are who we are trying to target with this through Safe Routes. So given the timeline that you've seen them propose, how do you anticipate that working into a school schedule considering they're out? I understand that you'll be incorporating some interviews prior, but over the summer, will there be any, any opportunities? So there'll be workshops along the way, definitely. Uh, and to the extent that, that um, families are in town through the summer, absolutely, they'll, they'll be um, encouraged to participate. Uh, but the, the program continues through, through until the end of the calendar year. So we'll be able to, to, to collect information from residents all through that time, time period. And, um, the public outreach and, the, and getting, getting the needs of the, identifying the needs of the, of the residents is, the, is a critical part of this program. And the next question I had is with regard to finances. So my understanding with this plan, it will start to list out not, um, infrastructure improvements and start to prioritize it. Does it in any way start to give us at least an idea of how much certain things can cost? Because as you know, our resources are limited. So as we start to think of the budget, I'd like to be able to start thinking the give and take when we look at budget priorities. So we'll, uh, yes, the answer, the answer um, is that we will, we will have budget, budgetary numbers associated with the projects uh, that come out of this. We're also structuring it so that we have hopefully some, uh, some lower costs, easier to achieve elements, as well as some more expense more expensive visionary items that we can include in the in the project, uh, and that will provide us a wide gamut and and uh, something to look forward to to programming into our CIP over over several years, uh, as we're able to identify funding sources, whether it be town funding sources, 
or outside funding sources um, that, that, that might come forward through, through grant opportunities or other opportunities. Are there questions? Seeing none, uh, since this uh, matter was pulled from the consent calendar, uh, we can have public testimony on it. I don't have any cards, but does anyone in the audience wish to address us on agenda item two, bicycle and pedestrian master plan? Noting that no one is coming forward, I will now close the public testimony portion of our hearing and look to the council members for motion discussion questions. Ms. Jensen. I to approve or actually authorize the town manager to execute an agreement for consultant services to uh, engage in figuring out our <laughs> bicycle and pedestrian master plan as it's indicated in our staff report and specifically incorporate the questions and answers that we have gotten this evening to pass on to the consultant to incorporate into the plan. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Seconded by Ms. Sayak. Discussion? Mr. Rennie. Thank you, Mayor Spector. I, I had a, several comments I wanted to make. Um, my, my first one is, is kind of a message for the consultants. I want to make sure that they dream big, and I could have asked this as a question, but we'll just leave it as, as a statement. Um, you know, I'd like them to think of a premium, what I would call a premium bicycle and pedestrian plan. Um, and to this, the, you know, think first about kind of putting costs to the side and determine what's the best we could do within some kind of reason um, with, with cost aside. Um, and then imagine this, this plan emphasizing, you know, I'd say emphasizing separation from cars so that it not only f is safer, it, it really encourages people to get on their bikes more. Um, there could even be maybe a second plan or a phasing of this, what I what I'm co may call also a stretch plan that's, the, the, that's more realistic to cost. Um, but I, I think it's appropriate to include items that may take a long time to achieve um, because of cost or other factors such as bridges or, or maybe, you know, land that needs to be the usage changed first or something like that. Um, I, I would put some idea, you know, let, let's say, for example, something was developed on the, on the North 40 that had a lot of lunch spots. Um, I would encourage um, the idea of creating a way to encourage people to walk from the hospitals, for example, instead of, of driving um, to, the, to the site. You know, imagine a nice promenade with trees separated from the cars. Well, maybe it's not possible, but, you know, th this, these are things to think about. Maybe a bridge over Los Gatos Boulevard so it's more um, desirable to walk there and get more people out of their cars. So those are my comments. Further discussion? All right, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes unanimously. Thank you. We are now on verbal communications. This is the opportunity for anyone in our audience to address us for three minutes on any item that is not on our agenda. I do have two cards for people who want to speak on verbal communications. First, Tom Boyce. Good evening, Tom Boyce, uh, 134 Wilder in the Almond Grove. Uh, we're here mainly about the North 40, I understand that. But uh, in the background, things are still happening uh, that we think are important to get our Almond Grove project moving forward. We're delighted to have the, the contract signed, but we think there's an opportunity perhaps to save $2 million. Uh, $2 million is, uh, is a lot of money from a taxpayer's standpoint. And I'd like to explain how I think that could be done. The idea is that now we have a contract, it's, uh, we have the ability also to negotiate change orders. Change orders are part of the, the normal process. Not always do we have the opportunity to do change orders that could save us $2 million. And that's what I'm urging you before construction starts to consider two change orders. Change order one substitutes 
complete thickness paving of concrete versus a thinner concrete over aggregate. Uh, you can see that for the two streets, we could save over $200,000. Change order two is about one of my favorite topics, and that's feature creep. I think feature creep is what has happened in getting this conduit and pull boxes put into this project. I don't think it has a place in a paving and reconstruction project. And you can see on two streets, about $160,000 would be saved in the town budget. Where's the two million I was talking about? Multiply the two street saving by the town staff uh, figure of five point uh, something. You end up with using their numbers, uh, what we would uh, have all 10 streets that could be saved for these two change orders. So if the change order was done now for the two streets and became part of the, the future for the other eight we have $2 million that you could save. I urge you to take action now. Thank you. Uh, we have a question, Ms. Sayak. Um, it, it's a question to both Mr. Boyce as well as staff. Um, thank you for your correspondence and continuing to evaluate this. I know we had asked this to be a town referral just because change order one, I don't understand the, the engineering behind it and so, um, just a status, should we be seeing something soon with regards to that? Uh, we've reported on this as a, as a referral, so it is now closed. And uh, Director Morley, as I understand it, has had um, direct community um, conversations about this as well. So we're still in the very beginning of, of the process. Um, since this is not a matter on the agenda tonight, and we will be talking about Almond Grove potentially on April 19th, that might be the better meeting to have a more in-depth conversation. Okay, if I may, Madam Mayor. Zach? Um, if you could just be prepared at, at the 19th to explain the differences between the different requests specific to change order number one. Thank you. Thank you both. All right, the next uh, card on verbal communications is Angelia, Angelia Dorner. Hello, I'm Angelia Dorner, a very proud resident of the Almond Grove. No, Tom and I did not plan this, but this is a recap of um, where we are currently with the Almond Grove project. Currently, we have funds al uh, fully allocated of 12.2, with 2.1 million of capital improvement projects being um, held off to the side. As far as the current estimate of numbers, that shows that we have a shortfall of 2.5. Miraculously, those two change orders could take care of that. But not only that, um, those, uh, the 16.7 actually includes 100% of our sidewalks and curbs and gutters that we went through that process on the first two streets and saved significant amounts. So those savings are still in there. And what I have here is actually a bigger picture of what we're trying to do with this project. And I think it's very important to look at this because what we're talking about is not just the numbers from the slide that I had in the last meeting two weeks ago, um, and wanted to clarify a couple of points that Mr. Worley provided in his communication to me a couple days ago. The primary differences are that um, the last time I talked to you, the uh, conduit was supposed to be in the face of the gutter. That's not really where it is. It's actually two and a half feet out into the street from the face of the curb. Um, it says that it is primarily going to be used as a pass-through and probably not to provide to individual houses. We're talking about high-speed internet here, okay, and a residential neighborhood. Pass through from where to where? And not only that, why would you put conduit in a neighborhood if you're not going to be delivering service to the houses? And the other clarification that was given in, in Mr. Morley's memo was that the resident would not have to pay for digging underneath the street and digging into all this conduit stuff to provide this service. The provider would do that. Who in the world would actually bear the cost 
of uh, doing all of that digging and providing internet service, re recouping maybe 50 or $60 a month from each household that they would tap into, it still makes absolutely no sense to me. In addition, Mr. Morley refers to future streets. This is going to be an option only item, but you guys have an option of not doing that. All you have to do is say so. Well, guess what? That option is still available for the first two streets as well. If it makes no sense for the uh, other streets, it makes no sense for the first two either. This quantifies to $870,000 um, that goes right out of those top numbers and is pure dollar savings, and I see no benefit whatsoever um, to this going on. PPW just does not seem to be listening about this particular item, and I would respectfully request, Madam Mayor, that you put this on a consent item because to me it's a no-brainer and we can get it out of the way really nice and quick. Thank you. Thank you. Questions? Seeing none. I have no other cards for verbal communications. I see no one coming forward. So we will now move on to other business. Agenda item eight, property location, North 40 specific plan area, phase one. Uh, and uh, as staff will discuss with you uh, what is being discussed here uh, with regard to the North 40 uh, are the story poles and a request for modification from the prior story po poll plan. Uh, we are not, not uh, discussing this evening the entire project, which is still before the Planning Commission. Staff report. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. As the mayor mentioned, what we are here to discuss this evening is the requested modification of the story poll exception that was considered and approved by the council in February of this year. The applicant's request in February was uh, to provide story polls for the perimeter structures. This is exhibit one in your staff report, and it shows what the council considered in February, and that was to story poll the perimeter structures along Lark, some along Los Gatos Boulevard, along the freeway, and then the mixed-use commercial building, as well as the other commercial buildings within the development. Before you go further, uh, a couple of things. When you go through these, uh, would you please start out by showing where Los Gatos Boulevard is so that we can put this in context? And also, will you be going on to the uh, exhibits, uh, the new exhibits we just got today? I will. That is Thank you very upcoming. Much. So the request in February included providing those perimeter um, story poles, as well as requesting that uh, the use of flags rather than netting for the mixed-use building, as well as a limited installation period of four weeks rather than throughout the public hearing process as the uh, story pole policy requires. The council considered that and required an additional six residential buildings to be story polled, and I apologize, they're not as clear on this as um, in your exhibit. This building this building, these two buildings here, as well as these two. Um, the council felt that those could be provided um, in addition to what the applicant was proposing. The other item was that they did, uh, the council, you guys, uh, did approve the use of flags, um, but did require that they be doubled up to increase the visibility um, to ensure that that was visible from the right of ways. The other item was is that they, in regards to the time request, uh, the, the request was increased to 60 days from the date that the public hearing notices for Planning Commission were issued with the intention that that overlap as much of the Planning Commission and Town Council public hearing process as possible. The applicant worked with their story poll installer to complete the approved story poll, poll, uh, story poll plan. As the netting was being completed and the final poll heights verified the applicant's civil engineer um, brought to their attention that some of the poles shown in Exhibit 2, the pink ones, were not actually installed. Um, 
and that as they looked into that further, the necessary guy wires to provide the uh, safety uh, support for those, um, that they weren't going to be able to install those fully. Um, prior to the Planning Commission meeting on Mar excuse me, March 30th, the applicant pursued alternative methods to displaying the setbacks and height of the structures along Las Gatas Boulevard. And that's what you see um, in exhibit, the first page of exhibit six, and those are the yellow dots. So the yellow dots uh, display what the applicant pursued um, that doesn't meet the general criteria of our story pole um, installation guidelines, um, which includes the netting wrapped around uh, the poles, but they did install single poles um, and flags on top, with the exception of these down here, they did install the flagging uh, that they installed on the mixed-use building in, in to connect those poles. Excuse me, Marnie, could you mm -hmm. orient us in terms of where the different Sorry. streets are, please? Thank you. So down here is Las Gatas Boulevard. And then we have Lark Avenue here. This is the existing Bennett Way um, and the two... Uh, Hirschman Medical Office buildings, and then this is the Olaf Medical Office building. The new neighborhood street is right here. Everybody on track with me? And we'll I'm going to add on to what the uh, manager said, that when you start moving around where it, like this is the yellow ones and this is mm -hmm. the exceptions, uh, would you please, for my benefit, go more slowly and point out what you're talking about. Madam Mayor, can I ask a question about the one that was just up there for my orientation purposes? Yes, please. Um, so Ms. Mosley, there's a obviously a big blank space down in the bottom of the middle. Yes. Those are the existing medical buildings that are owned by Mr. Hirschman, is that correct? So this is owned by Hirschman and the parking lot that extends off of that. This is the Olaf Medical Building and the parking that, it, that is to the rear of that. Okay, but there's two medical buildings that front on Las Gatas Boulevard. There's actually three. Okay, three. And they're not, I'm, I'm trying to figure out why is that blank? And are the representatives of those medical buildings or the people that are there here to say anything about any impeded access to their buildings? So they're blank because they're not included in the phase one um, applications. So those buildings and the parking associated with them are, are proposed to be retained. Um, they aren't, they may or may not be present. I'm not, I'm not certain this evening, um, but they are actively involved in the project. Uh, but it wouldn't impact the Bennett Way people that, uh, that currently use Bennett Way because the story pole exception did cover uh, not requiring poles in these areas. Okay, thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Ms. Mosley. Of course. So I'm going to start at the corner of Lark Avenue and Las Gatas Boulevard. Again, I'm going to ask you to uh, orient us to whatever uh, document you have. So this, I believe, is sheet three. I'm sorry, I took them out of my packet so that I could. This is sheet four, as Joel is informing me, of exhibit six. And so this shows the poles that were proposed to be installed per the approved story pole exception in February. I'm sorry, I'm going to slow you down again mm -hmm. because I can hear what's going on here. Uh, people are turning the pages to catch up with you. Okay. So, uh, because Sorry. I don't see numbers on ours, uh, and so what we're going to have to do is after you put it up there, we're going to have to find it. Okay. Uh, and uh, it looks as though everybody has found it, so okay. go ahead. I apologize. I'm, I'm told it's number five. Okay. <coughs> So here again we have Las Gatas Boulevard, and this is the corner at Lark. This is the existing 76 station, um, gas station. And there in the mess here is two residential units and their access points, which I am going to mark in for you and hopefully make that a little clearer. So the driveway for this lot is here. 
And the driveway for this other lot is right here in between these trees. And I have a street view as well. Kind of show the two access points that we're dealing with here. And now I'll go back to the exhibit here. So the red poles are the ones that they don't believe they can install. Um, and the circles around them show the buffer areas that uh, signify where the guy wires would have to be placed in order to secure those poles. The yellow dots are the ones that they have installed poles for, but they have single orange um, flags at the top of them. They don't have the traditional netting. Um, and that allows them to reduce the, the number of guy wires in order to secure the support because the wind load is not uh, factored in. It's not as significant when, you're, uh, when you only have the single poles and they're not connected by the, the netting. Did I have any questions on this, exit, this, this sheet before I move on? We do. Ms. Jensen. Again, for orientation purposes. Mm -hmm. Bennett Way, which goes between the medical building, the existing medical, and goes down to the, is that to the right and off your, of your exhibit? Correct. It's on the other side of this building here. Okay, thank you. All right, does it look like we have questions? Go ahead. And then the other two conflict points. This is sheet four of exhibit six. Refer that way. So for orientation, we are at Las Gatas Boulevard here. This is the proposed I'm sorry, I'm gonna stop you. Remember, we don't have sorry. numbers on ours. So I wanna catch up with, with where you are. All right, I'm there. Thank you, everybody else. Okay. So this is Las Gatas Boulevard down here at the bottom, and this is the proposed new neighborhood street that would, that would go down right here. This is uh, the Enterprise, the single-story Enterprise building, and right here is the two-story um, office building. Um, and then back here is the office uh, building for uh, Bartlett Tree Experts. And to the back of that is where they store all of their equipment, their tree trimming um, and large uh, equipment. And so when the applicant initially put together their story pull plan, they didn't see conflict points as much in those areas. They believed they could work around the existing structures. And due to, again, the guy wires that would then impede the access along here and access to the building as well as the equipment storage area at the rear, um, they do not believe they can complete the story poles that were, per that were included in the uh, approved story pole exception. And then the third conflict point is in regards to the new building that was proposed, that is proposed along Las Gatas Boulevard adjacent to Neighborhood Street. There is an existing residence here. That residence is access point is right here and it curves in and this is his garage right over here so prior to the march 30 march 30th meeting i believe it was friday before that meeting the applicant did complete installation of these two poles as well as these three along the back here and as i discussed before there are there they did use the flag netting um, along the back here so those do connect similar to what we would see in our story pole traditional story pole installation um, and then these two are just singular um, poles with a f orange flag at the top um, and as you can see the access point to get to in and out of this site if they were to install these other poles um, would obviously conflict with that is everybody clear on these items 
So based on the information provided, staff does believe that the implementation of the approved story poll plan would conflict with access and use of these residences and business operations and would justify further modification of the approved story poll exception as permitted by the town's story poll policy. This completes staff's report and I am here for any questions. Questions? Ms. Sayak? Okay. Um, it's more process related. So March 30th, you held a planning commission meeting. And my understanding is the Friday before that was when staff verified whether or not the story poles were built according to what was approved by the council, correct? I apologize, I was a week off. It was the Friday two weeks prior. Friday two weeks prior. That this came to our attention. Okay, and so... So the first question, and I, I know I've asked it before, but I think we, we should hear it again, is why have the public hearing when it hasn't even been approved, knowing that it was going to come back to us? So staff did consider continuing it. It was a special meeting um, that we scheduled particularly for the North 40, and there was already confusion in the public as far as the the thought that it was going to happen on March 23rd. So we had already gotten all the information out for the March 30th meeting and had, had uh, continued to provide that information to the community. Um, and the concern was that it was going to further confuse and frustrate the community if we were to continue it again. Um, even though we didn't continue it from the March 23rd meeting, it was, that it was communicated that that was the earliest date that the Planning Commission would hear it. And so there was some confusion in the community um, and we wanted to um, limit that. Okay, and then if I may continue. So I'm trying to understand. So the yellow is the, <coughs> the poles that are up or b what is being proposed today. The yellow poles are what they have currently installed. and But it's a singular and it's not um, strung together as we normally would expect. Correct. They're just a single pole. And is that because it's higher than 45 feet? And so you, you mentioned that um, the flags, we approved the flags for, for spaces higher than 45 because of the wind factor. Right. So these buildings that are being, that we're looking at today, these are the ones that are 45 feet? No. They use the flags on here as well as on the tops of these poles because they have a lower uh, wind load associated with them. And there's more guy wires that are needed in order to secure those poles when you have that greater uh, wind load. So they were able to install fewer guy wires that didn't conflict with these in order to support these poles as installed. So if they were to do the netting, as would be traditionally uh, uh, used in, in, cause these, this building is only 25 feet tall. Um, so these, I think at the back corner as the grade goes down, it does increase in height, but these poles along here are only 25 feet tall. <coughs> and so um, the 45 foot was in order to reduce the wind load and the safety concerns with the taller building. Um, but in order to reduce the guy wires that were needed to secure those poles, they opted to do just the um, just the flags, because again, that reduced the wind load and the net the need to further secure them for safety purposes. So same technique, but different issues. Mr. Rennie, Madam Mayor, do you want disclosures now? I'm going to hold off until after we finish with the staff report. So okay. remind me then if I forget. Uh, question, um, let's assume for this question that uh, story poles and netting are very important to me. Um, and so I understand that the applicant is requesting um, exceptions to our story pole uh, rules policy. And I understand that generally the rationale has to do with guy wires and interference with businesses, streets, houses, and so forth. My question is, um, staff, our staff has more expertise on this specific technical issue than I do. Uh, is it your opinion that all of the requests that 
uh, applicant is making on safety reasons is um, is accurate, in your opinion? Staff has concluded that it does meet the intent of the the rationale for providing exceptions to the story pull to the story pull requirements. If you look at um, other story pull installations that have guy wires, you almost miss them because they are so thin and they. Um, and so there is a safety measure associated with installing them where people are going to be accessing um, facilities and residences and expecting them to work around them. So there is a safety measure that is associated with um, completing those while still um, having access to um, those uses. Is there any other way we can get the netting up there? The applicant may be able to speak to whether some additional could be installed um, and whether there's some other options there. I believe he's done some additional discussions with those tenants um, to further investigate above and beyond um, and may be able to offer some, some, op some additional discussion to that. From your expertise, do you think that there could be more netting? I don't want to say netting, but, but there may be some areas that, um, that some additional because really, when you look at the story poll policy, the intent is to notify the public that something's going on, as well as to kind of a, a, to provide a reflection of the location and massing of those buildings. And so, the intent of trying to provide where these structures will be set back at and what those ridge heights would be um, meets the intent of the the policy. So that's where staff's uh, recommendation came from. Uh, maybe just one more question. Um, I agree that the netting policy is in part to communicate uh, height and mass, but when this member of the community drives along the boulevard north of Lark, I can't see the project. I certainly can see it other places, but I can't see it there. And is there something we can do about that? Well, the applicant can speak to, I mean, obviously the boulevard is where the existing uses conflict the most. We have the most in intensity of uses along the boulevard that would cause that conflict. Some of those areas were anticipated and included in the exception that was granted in February. Um, some of them weren't fully anticipated in that plan. Um, so you're going to obviously see more of it along Lark than you are on Las Gatas Boulevard if you're trying to avoid conflict with usage of those existing businesses and structures. All right, thank you. Any other questions? Ms. Jensen. I wanted to follow up on the general idea of safety and access. And I'm, this has been something I've been curious about for quite some time, not just with this project, but with other commercial projects. And we've gotten email communications on this topic, which is, I'm an individual homeowner and I want to put a second story on. I put the netting up and I'm going to access that house every day. And maybe I have kids, maybe I don't, but we put the netting up. So why is that different? if it is in staff's view, than putting it up on in any other place? I can't speak to every scenario. A lot of times when we do have single family homes or new single family homes, um, when they install the story poles, those homes are vacant. As far as a second story addition, I don't know that, I don't know the percentage of them that they're living in that space versus not. Um, second story additions, we do require story poles, but oftentimes those can be constructed on the roofs. Um, and they don't have uh, the same uh, stability uh, discussions. But I can't speak to every scenario. Ms. Jensen? Just one follow-up. Um, I think I asked this at the February meeting, or I did in conjunction with the Shannon uh, Las Gatas Boulevard proposed project, is if you can put it on a roof, why can't you put it on the roofs of the existing building? And maybe that's directed to the applicant. I don't know. That is something that the applicant may be prepared to speak to about tonight. Okay, thank you. Well, let me follow up then. In staff's opinion and their expertise, can the uh, netting be placed up on the top of one of these or on these structures? Yes. Thank you. Other questions? All right, no further questions of staff. Uh, I do have cards at this time. Mr. Rennie, I understand you have a disclosure. Thank you. If Ms. Marnie could help me with my disclosure. Um, uh, so I met with the, um, leave those up for a sec, so I'm going to point some things out. 
Um, so I met with the applicant and walked the site and looked at the story polls, and I'm, I believe I'm the only council member that did that. Um, so the point of disclosures is if I go out and meet with the applicant and learn something the other council members um, didn't learn because they didn't go out there, um, I'm supposed to try to pass that information on. Um, so I made a few notes of, of things to pass on. Um, I don't think there's any big wows, but in, the, in, you know, in an effort to try to um, full disclosure, um, can you rotate it right again? So Los Gatos Boulevard is at the bottom. So if I just mention um, the building on the, on the bottom right that we've kind of been talking about, I did learn there are three red um, poles on the right in the middle. Um, there is a trailer park there, and I believe that um, Mr. Cabrobres told me that, that um, those poles couldn't be installed because of the trailer. The trailer looked movable to me, so that was one piece of information I would add. Um, uh, the other thing is uh, staff said that the three poles in the back are not connected. I thought I remember connect. Um, there's a, there is connection between those, but maybe Mr. Cobobre, Cob when he comes up, can fill us in on that. Um, another thing, the flags, what we're calling flags, weren't really flags. They were a c cut out of netting that was probably one foot or two foot by two foot, something like that. It wasn't the same flags that was on the, the upper roofs. Um, on this particular one on the right, most of where all of those poles are supposed to go is all driveway. It isn't, it isn't house, so um, I think as um, um, was shown there that you know, it, it interferes with the driveway. Maybe some more of those poles can go up. I'm trying not to make any judgments at this point. Um, if I could make some comments on the upper building, if you could pull down the, the drawing a little bit. Um, so the, th this one here, when I was there, it shows only a couple trucks. I was there between 4.30 and 5 yesterday. Most of that back parking lot um, was full of trucks. I, I couldn't see any, any extra space there. Um, the one yellow pole that's um, forward there um, is by the, a house. Uh, Mr. Cabrobres, I can't say his name very well, um, confided in me that he didn't realize there was anybody living in that house when they um, originally thought they were going to put these story poles up. He, he also told me that they had some of these, the red poles furthest down, and the, the um, owner of that house, or resident, sorry, resident of that house, um, complain he couldn't get his truck in there. Um, I also noted where all those poles are is the circulation. This is the back of the Enterprise rental car where all the cars are parked and the circulation went, um, it goes you know, right to left or left to right. So that would wipe out all the circulation when you put the guy wires in. I also wanted to note, I walked the other parts of um, where all of the poles are up and it's, it's a sea of guy wires. I almost guillotined myself a couple times. Um, so the way they're doing it is definitely some concerns on safety. If you could go to your other map, please. Um, so these, these two houses, um, if you could shift it left a little bit, I'll just talk about both of them. That's the gas station on the corner. So um, the house next to the gas station, um, he confided in me, is owned by Summerhill. Um, the other house on the right is is still owned and rented by the Yukis. The same thing for the the other house on the other page was was not owned by um, Summerhill or or um, uh, Mr. Cobrabres yet. Uh, so the the where the yellow I did note where the yellow poles are um, there that had a flag on them. They're really not um, visible from Los Gatos Boulevard because these trees in front are so so tall. Um, some of these, my notes are sort of judgments and I'm trying not to put judgments in yet. Uh, both homes were definitely occupied with a lot of cars. I saw some people there. Uh, I think that's it. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we've had our disclosures. Uh, and questions of staff. We'll now get to the public testimony. And again, the issue before us is an exception to the story poll uh, policy. I'm going to ask staff, uh, given, given that this is uh, a, a request to modify a previous approval, 
I am assuming that we will be starting with the applicant for that uh, exception. Uh, and what is the timing on that? As much, uh, how much time can they testify? Ten minutes. All right. So uh, we have Mr. Capobres uh, and team, if any, uh, and you have ten minutes. Madam Mayor, thank you. I'm Don Capobres, representing the development team on the North 40. <clears throat> like everything on the North 40, it's about balance of competing interests. Obviously, respecting town policy and the purpose of the story poll policy has been important for us since the beginning. Um, there's logistics of putting up 500 plus poles um, on the property, and then finally, respecting the operating businesses and residences out there. Um, we did our best despite um, some pretty significant weather out there the day after the story pole plan was approved. We had a tree fall and uh, crush a pickup truck and a house on site. Um, with that, we got concerned. Our story pole contractor, we all decided to pretty much beef up the support of those poles as much as we could. Uh, unlike some of the properties here in Los Gatos, the North 40 has very soft ground. Uh, the guy, water, guy wires had to, again, increase because of that. <clears throat> when you do walk the site, it is private property, so to respect that, uh, ask the public to respect that. But when uh, council does walk the site, you'll see that the poles are supported by numerous walnut trees kind of on the property. And then finally, you know, we own up to mistakes when we make them. And frankly, we proposed some locations for poles in our original um, proposal that probably should have never been proposed given the activities going out there. So uh, apologies for putting staff in a, in a situation where we're having to come back again tonight. So what we learned uh, on the guy wires and what we learned is that um, the mesh that your town policy calls for uh, because of the, the wind load requires three to six wires uh, per pole. Uh, the length, uh, the radius of those poles uh, are typically the height of the pole plus a few feet. So for example, if you have a 35-foot pole, you'd have a 38-foot radius. For the poles that are at 25 feet, typically along the boulevard, you're looking at a 25 to 28-foot radius for those guy wires to be 360 degrees around the pole. You also, to carry the mesh that you typically see in your policy, you need, um, it can't be any more than 30 foot intervals for those poles as well. We also learned that, um, you know, it's a very emotional project, obviously. I don't need to say that. Uh, the residents and businesses out there are also emotional. They've had to deal with, uh, unfortunately, uh, trespassing onto private property by some aggressive members of the public. So on our side, we tried to err by not bothering these tenants and businesses as much as possible in our, in our various proposals. Um, staff, ha as we prepared for this hearing, uh, we submitted to staff what we thought we could do at the time. We've already installed those poles. Um, in the, with the benefit of time between submittal for this hearing, and feedback we've gotten from community members and frankly uh, walk through with council member rennie um, we did go back out we had through cooperation with the yuki family and their property management Hashla, had actual conversations with tenants who would be impacted and i do have um, to share with you um, kind of augmentation to the proposal that's already in front of you uh, I can go through that now. Um, I've got about six minutes left, or I can end my presentation here and just get the questions. All right. Well, as mayor, I'm going to suggest that you uh, give us your entire presentation. Let us know what you, how you intend to augment what's there now. So this is what st this is what staff presented. Um, just to catch everyone up, this is Los Gatos Boulevard. This is Enterprise Rent-A-Car. This is um, a tree company called Bartlett, and it, it's not a, an office for Bartlett. Bartlett's office is actually here. This is actually a single-family detached residence. Um, our property management extended this tenant who... Mr. Capobres, I'm going to have you uh, hold on for just a minute because yes, we have that attachment, mm -hmm. and I know that some council people are having a hard time finding it. Does everybody have it now? Okay. 
So this is actually a single family residence that um, is a tenant of Grosvenor's. Um, the tenant um, lease was up. We extended the lease uh, to accommodate um, the tenant. Uh, this is, again, the two-story office, Enterprise rent -a car This is Boulevard Tavern. So this is what you have in your staff report as uh, what's already been constructed. Same exact image, Madam Mayor. Same exact image. You don't have this. This is new. But it's the same one you were just looking at. You just added some proposed poles. As Council Member Rennie noted, this is a driveway um, for this tenant. It's really important that he's able to kind of back out here and then pull out. Does that make sense? Back out all the way back to the fence and pull out. Um, as Council Member Rennie noted, there was a tra there is a trailer here in working with uh, the Yuki family and actually meeting with the tenant. Uh, the tenant has agreed to relocate this trailer, which will allow us, <clears throat> again, This is what we've already constructed. This is what we're currently proposing. We would install uh, a third pole here, connect the three poles in similar fashion to the poles that are back here, which would give you the setback of the property um, as well as the height along Los Gatos Boulevard. It's always been noted that we can't do the complete width of the building because this is right at their entry point. Um, and that was approved by council, but we would provide for these um, these poles on the front, these poles on the back. As Council Member Rennie and I were out there, this is a driveway. It takes some maneuver, you know, an ability to maneuver. But I thought to be um, fully, I guess, up front in terms of height, it was important to get this uh, a pole in this middle run out there because of the roof is peaked. So if you only see the height at the front and the back, it's a very low building. And I have, I'm vertically challenged to jump, but I could probably touch the top of that. Uh, that's not true. I wish I could. Um, but it's very low. And so we propose to put another pole in the middle, and it would be single. It would be a single pole to reflect the roof peak. And then you would, you would, have, um, you would have these three poles connected with flags. And there would be fl the rope flag, not the mesh. And that's because if we needed the mesh, we would need these, this radius uh, for, for the guy wires. But you would have connecting uh, flag rope across the front. So that's what we're proposing in a change for this, this particular area. The spirit of it was... These are the lowest height buildings on the North 40 specific plan. This is a, a, a 25 foot height limitation on the perimeter along Los Gatos Boulevard, which is much less than the existing buildings out there now by about 20 feet. This is the gas station to orient you. Are you kind of there yet? You have this exhibit. So what what we agree, what I, I believe to be true, and Councilmember Rennie kind of pointed it out, is we needed to provide kind of that front face um, to Los Gatos Boulevard to, to give the public an idea of where the setback would be in the height. It has already been discussed, and I didn't know this, to be honest with you. Um, the ability to put story poles on top of a house isn't as big of a deal as we can. Again, we are trying to be very respective of the property. Uh, tenants, the residents out there. So we never envisioned putting something on someone's roof. What we propose here, in addition to these three poles that are already here, is to continue the corner by pr putting two poles on top of this existing residential structure, which would create this corner along Los Gatos Boulevard. In this case, uh, these two poles are already there. We would create the corner by adding another pole um, Let's see. I'm hopeful that we can connect um, the poles. We will not be able to do it with mesh because of the guy wire requirement again, but we would do it with flag rope, uh, similar to what we already have out there. I will, I will note this. 
if you went out there today, these poles you cannot see. They're lower than the tree line out there. There is a kind of a Los Gatos institution in terms of a dummy on a stick. At the, I think people know what I'm talking about. Uh, a mannequin that's up here. That mannequin is probably a good five to ten feet above the story pole, uh, maybe five feet above the existing poles that we have out there right now. Um, so this is a very, because of the trees there, it's a, it's a tough place to actually see the story poles even after we would construct them. But um, to, to provide, I think, the story that we owe the town elected officials and key stakeholders, um, we'd like to be able to, to augment our proposal by providing that front line on Los Gatos Boulevard. Thank you. Questions? Mr. Rennie? Um, I think just one. So the three uh, down the right side are not connected now, if I remember correctly. When we were standing in that person's yard, I, we were, I was having trouble finding them amongst all the trees, so they definitely weren't connected. So you are going to try to, con those can connect with, mesh or they have to be rope also? I would, I would suggest they have to be rope because if we go with mesh, we've got to beef up the guy wires for those. The, the guy wires are not as robust here now because they're just pulls of the flag on top of them. As soon as we put the mesh that you see kind of on the other story poles, we will have to impact kind of this 25 to 28 foot radius with three to six guy wires or three to nine guy wires. Sorry, three to six guy wires. Okay, thank you. Other questions? Uh, Sayak. Okay, um, so if I'm understanding this correctly, there's three areas that, um, that you're seeking a waiver from. We just talked about this. We talked about this other area um, in your other slide. If you could go back to your first one. Okay, and then above area A, you just have one yellow pole. How would you propose to depict this area? The, this building, so the way that the building actually functions in our proposal is this is an L-shaped building that would go like, like essentially like this. And it's framed across the street with Market Hall. This corner is already there. You can see it. We put this pole up to be able to give planning commissioners who toured the site prior to the hearing kind of an understanding of where that line would continue for for that building. Given the level of activity here, this was a mistake. We cannot put any more poles here without disrupting this business. It's a tree um, maintenance company. It's been very difficult finding a place to relocate all of these maintenance yards, yard trucks Kind of as a relocation play in the first place, um, you know. So this is very valuable to this particular company in terms of maintaining their operation. Sure, go ahead. And so this is tree maintenance. These are and the others are homes. Are this is tree maintenance. This okay. is their maintenance yard, and this is a single-family residence. Do you know if the property owners or the tenants that are in these homes or in this business, are they here tonight to speak? Property owner, I represent the property owner who is Grosvenor Americas. Okay. Well, the tenants then. Our are tenants they, are not here today. They are not here. What about the business owner? Uh, for Bartlett? Mm -hmm. No, I did not invite them to the hearing. Okay. Uh, question. When your... Um, when the development is completed as you currently anticipate it, uh, do you uh, foresee that the development will be visible from uh, Los Gatos Boulevard north of Lark? Yes, ma'am. And so, but if you put the netting in or the flags in or the poles in as you currently um, anticipate, they would not be uh, visible from the boulevard. Yes, they would be. They'd be vi very visible here in this area. This, again, is a pretty deep drop. You're not going to – you have to walk on site um, to see this. You see Market Hall quite a bit because it's a little bit higher. So you would see it to the north of uh, Enterprise. Is that where I am there? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Would you see it anyplace else? I'm challenged – 
it's really hard to see these. And even if we connect them, I think you'd be challenged to see them because of the, the trees um, that are here and this building that blocks it. Um, again, you know kind of the mannequin that's up here, story poles, the flags fall significantly below that mannequin and the tree line will obstruct. You'll see them for sure, you'll see them, but they're, they are difficult to find through the trees. Thank you. Other questions? Ms. Jensen. Um, Mr. Kapovis, if you can go back to the other exhibit, the Bartlett tree area. I'm just curious if you know how far off Los Gatos Boulevard is that area? How many feet, yards, football fields, however you want to explain? Approximately. Your staff planner to probably here 100 feet deeper uh, to the yellow pole, maybe 100 feet. I would have guessed a little bit, um, a little bit more. Um, okay. Sorry, don't thank have you. the answer. Okay, thank you. You're talking about right behind Enterprise. Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you, Mr. Rennie. Thank you, Madam Mayor, and I, I guess I forgot to thank Mr. Cabobres for trying to, you know, work out some of the suggestions that I really wanted to get in there, get more of the street front showing. Um, but my question, and I can't remember without going back, back to the site, so at the back part of the L building you see five um, red ones. I can't remember that, that are not going to be installed. See the five? Please. Yeah, I can't recall why are those aren't in that yard. Is there a house there? I can't remember anymore. No, it's the, we'd, we'd have to take the trees down. Okay, thank you. Uh, let me follow up on that. Are those trees remaining should your development go forward as you would like it? An answer to that. All right. no. Thank you. Other questions? All right. Thank you, Mr. Capobres. And reminding the audience, I do have speaker cards, that the issue before us this evening is a exception to the story poll policy. First speaker, Lee Fago. And so we can move this along. David Lawler will be after, and then Cindy Schneider. Madam Mayor and Council Members, um, because you have already approved the North 40 plan and the developer's submission, I recognize you cannot amend the current town ordinances, the town general plan, or the North 40 specific plan to change the developer's requirements for their already approved proposal. This approval has already been granted. However, changes to any of these governing documents could be for guiding any other developments going forward after such changes are made. This should be a lesson to help put more clarity into future development requirements. And for the North 40 development from today, diligence should be paid to determine non-compliance in this submission for variances from the governing documents noted above. More specificity must be provided to eliminate any interpretation or definition of terms inconsistent with the intent of the guiding documents. For example, specificity to the term open space or green space, as we're trying to protect here, streets, sidewalks, parking lots, terraces, gradient changes, roof gardens and balconies are not defined as open spaces. Determined by specifying what is required versus what is suggested, and provide some in-town examples for clarity. Any variances granted on one project becomes the starting point for the next as developers have demonstrated in their challenges both to the Planning Commission and to the Council. Do not consider for approval Phase 1 without also knowing and approving Phase 2 and Phase 3 so that the full impact and compatibility, because the North 40 plan is for all phases, it is one document for one of the most significant pieces of our heritage. Given this is the largest single development possible in town, now or probably in the next 50 years, establish I suggest establishing some type of a citizen's oversight committee or commission specific to provide additional guidance, oversight, and function as another form of checks and balances and a resource to the town staff, management, and government. This citizen's committee or commission could and should reduce time for approval, 
It should ensure compliance with the approved plans and control documents. It should work to maintain town character, safety, and quality of life. It should work to balance the downtown neighborhoods in the North 40. And the developers are not usually residents of the town. The current proposal from the developers does not come anywhere close to providing adequate parking within its boundaries anywhere. More underground parking provides open space if done correctly. Street parking in the design setting in our lobby will be wholly inadequate. Hopefully we have all learned what real traffic patterns emerge today from the medical megapolis at of Palo Alto and so forth down at Bascom, at uh, Los Gatos Boulevard. I don't believe anyone in this room believes in the traffic study submitted for the North 40. It is time for a do-over by a true third party with current knowledge of true traffic flow rates and the pattern for Los Gatos. Regarding the school impact, I understand the town cannot directly involve itself in this issue, but it is left to manage the aftermath. And for example, the town has commissioned a traffic study. And Mr. Traffic study, yeah, thank you. Um, I'm going to, as I said, I really want to focus on the netting. Do you have an opinion as to whether or not there should be uh, a further exception to the netting policy? No. All right, thank you. And again, please focus on the issue before us, Mr. Lawler. I'm actually going to talk about netting. Sorry. You know, I could talk about the whole thing. Um, so I didn't prepare anything massive, basically. I don't have anything written. But I mean, I want to talk about three points. One is the intent and what the intent of the story poll should be. Right, and the equity that they actually bring along with them, and the equity to whom. And finally, a uh, question on feasibility. Right, I mean, I think those are the three, three things we've got here. Uh, you know, we did discuss what the intent of the law is, and the intent obviously is to make the public aware of what's going on. Um, and that's, you know, awareness is a key thing. I think a huge number of people in this city and outside of the city and previous residents became aware of what was going on in North 40 when the initial story polls went up. I have a sister-in-law who moved out of this city uh, a year and a half ago, because it was getting the traffic was getting too high, she moved to San Francisco. She was recently here, went to San to uh, excuse me Santa Cruz, and she was, she called us. She goes, "What is going on? I saw the story. What is happening?" The story polls make awareness with netting. It's a key thing. The other intent then question is: We know the intent of the law, and it's actually fairly clear. What is the builder's intent? The builder's intent say they say safety, but I also think it's also, and I, I this is my opinion. I'm not going to accuse him of anything, but it's to hide this from the public to not show the public how big this thing really is. So the question one is on intent. The second thing is on equity. We're all equal, right? Everyone is equal, treated the same. Persons being physical human beings as well as companies. And I, I'm sorry if you think that most people move out of their house and they Please put up story Please direct posts. your comments to us. Well, her comment was, oh, people move out of their house and they put up their second story, story, story polls. Not in my house. This, the planning commission insisted I put up story poles on the house we were living in. And we were expanding the side and going up. But I had to. I had to live there. Some of them fell down. So it happens to everybody, and that's equity. Everybody should be treated equally under the law. And so finally, this question is feasibility. And feasibility actually gets into engineering. Now, the original plan for these story poles came from the builder, if I'm to understand correctly, and they engineered it. So obviously their engineers aren't that good because it can't be done, they're saying. They're coming back and going, oh, please, we need an exception to this. Um, you know, we in assumed incorrectly they'd actually looked at this stuff and engineered it. Obviously they hadn't, and now they're coming back asking us nicely, can we change it? Well, feasibility, and I work in engineering, feasibility is also a question of money. They re-rented, they re-leased a piece of property. They could have actually not leased, and they could have built up the story poles, but now it's leased, we're trying not to... They're going to make, if they build all these units in the, in the side of the uh, Los Gatos School District, that's $27 million of pure profit. They can afford to build a solution that shows the, intent, the, the story polls, right? And so finally, the request I have in the last 15 seconds is we need, you need to send them back to engineer a solution that shows the mass and intent of what they're actually doing, not with flags, but with actual netting. Because people see netting, flag, it shows the mass. A flag here and a flag here does not do that. That's my request. Thank you. Do we have questions? We do have a question, Ms. Sayak. So what we're, what at least I'm trying to understand is, so you, it sounds like you remodeled and you yep. put story poles up. Yep. <sighs> Tell me about the wires. Were they in your driveway? How did... They had to be, they actually had to be into the driveway all the way to the property line because you can't go a certain distance, right? Actually, a couple actually in the backyard were into neighbor's yards and they were nice enough to allow that. Um, had to hold it up. This is actually, we started, 
building being what it is. We started in August, thinking we'd get done quick. It lasted through winter, and we finally got all approvals and everything else like that. And yet there was a storm. That happens. That's life. But we were living in it, and they were. It was going up the second story. We have a low pitch roof. We're going up a full story above that, above both um, the house as well as part of the garage. Um, and it went through planning. This is in 2000. It was a while ago. Um, and so also a little bit over, we expanded the side over on the, the other side of the house as well. We didn't get an exception. We lived in it. That's life. That's the way it works. That's equity. And my second question Sorry. to you, what was the height of the poles that you, the story poles that you put up? Oh, two times the size of our height of our house. So, you know, we take the house size this times two. It's a two-story house? Yeah, it's two-story. Okay. Yeah, going to two stories. So you're looking at, you know, plus the roof line. You had to go all the way to the peak of the roof. So you're looking okay. at probably about 30 feet, something like that, 25 feet, okay. that area. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Other questions? Thanks. Seeing none, thank you, sir. Cindy Schneider, who will be followed by Roy Moses and Anne Despars. Despars. Good evening, Mayor, Council Members. I apologize for my casual attire. I left my pickleball match early so I could be here tonight. Um, Cindy Schneider, 30-year uh, resident of Los Gatos. So I usually cringe when someone is giving a speech and they reference the definition of a certain word according to Webster's Dictionary. But I thought in this case, it could be beneficial and might help to illustrate what we are actually talking about here. Story polls. Well, we all know what a poll is. But what about story? Story has many meanings. According to Webster's Dictionary, a story is an account of incidents or events, the intrigue or plot of a narrative or dramatic work, a statement regarding the facts pertinent to a situation in question, a fictional narrative, a widely circulated rumor, a falsehood, or a lie. So in terms of the proposed North 40 development project, I ask, which story is this? Is it a statement regarding the facts? Or a fictional narrative, falsehood, lie, or widely circulated rumor? What is the true story? Is it a long story? Is it another story? Is it a fairy story? Is it half the story? Is it an example of changing one's story? Grosvenor, as is required, show us through story polls exactly how this development will look. No exceptions to this requirement. Put all the polls up and give us, wait for it, the whole story. Thank you. Thank you. Questions? Uh, this council is going to work hard and effectively on this application, and so I would ask that you hold your applause till you go home or go in the hallway. <laughs> Thank you. Roy Moses, followed by Amy Despars. Good evening, Mayor and Council. <clears throat> Thank you for the opportunity. I think those that have been here before and saw me speak, it's more emotional than anything else. The people that preceded me have a lot more information and know the laws better than I do. All I know is that I like beauty, like I've said before, and I hate all this ugliness that's going on. My name is Roy Moses. I live at 16529 LaCroix Court in East Los Gatos. Lived here for 47 years, raised five children, have 11 grandchildren. I apologize to them for not being up here a long time ago, talking to this council and the Planning Commission. What you're doing in this community is abhorrent. They can't believe it. And the story polls do tell the difference. That's what we're here to talk about tonight. We came here because of the development on uh, uh, Shannon Road and Las Gatas Boulevard. When those story polls went up, which is a street I go down, up and down every day because I live off of Shannon Road, I almost threw up because the same thing happened to Bluebird Development and the same thing happened to Mayhus. The story polls are one idea, but when you see the development put in there and all these people jammed in like sardines and there's people crazy enough to pay $2.5 for those houses, it's not what Los Gatos is and never has been. This community was a resort town, a vacation town for San Franciscans to go on the way to the to the beach to, uh, through, uh, to Santa Cruz and go through Las Gatas. Some of them stayed here. You, the, the, I sent the council and thank you to, um, uh, got your name, yes, Ms. Nell Nielsen and uh, Mayoka for replying within one hour of my email today. Sent it out more later than I wanted to. But we can't continue this, okay? For future generations, whatever, 
We cannot, we can't, but we can't worry about all the people that want to come here and build all these things. And I feel bad for the Yukis. If they would have built this property, if they would have had their plans done 10 years ago, it would have been very easy because nobody was looking at the growth. They were looking at the depressed times that we were in. But the infrastructure, the council members heard, see this in my email, the infrastructure was building. Everything was moving. This was 10 years ago. Then we had a recession, which usually takes place around after five years. And then, all of a sudden, the infrastructure is being uh, built because all these co companies around here were hiring the great minds from around the world, etc. We cannot, as a community, handle all of, these, all of these developments and things that are going on. We are a town. We are not a city. You heard that from me before. So I just want to say to you, I'm in agreement that the story polls in total for phase one, two, and three must be put up before any more decisions are made on this project. You go to the freeway, it's a totally different vision from Lark Avenue. It's a totally different vision from Las Gatas Boulevard where they're talking about the trees. Who cares about the trees? The trees are going down. Take them all down. If they want to build this big project, take them down. Put up the story poles. Tell the community what you're building so we can say no to your project. Thank you. Thank you. Amy Despars, and she will be followed by Bruce McCombs and Sam Weedman. My name is Amy Despar. Sorry, two six seven Long Ridge Road. Um, I am. My kids are third generation here in Los Gatos, so obviously I have a heartfelt interest in what's happening in our town. Um, one thing I'd like to mention is, well, first I'm asking for no exceptions exceptions have gotten us to where we are right now. The developers who we did the exception, we turned the car lot into residential. Another exception. Exceptions are what have get, been getting us where we are. We make exceptions for these developers and enough is enough. We need to start listening to the townspeople here. I didn't get an exception when I did my story polls. As a matter of fact, I had to move my story poles by a few inches because they were not exactly right on a second story home after all of my neighbors had approved my, uh, my second story. I didn't get an exception. I had to move them. My husband was in, this, in a storm, as a matter of fact, um, moving his story poles so that we can make the deadline to get it approved in time. No exceptions. Um, I've been standing in front of the Planning Commission and Town Council for the last 20 years begging for the town to follow the Los Gatos Boulevard plan. More exceptions were made. Begging for the members to think about all the potential growth for the boulevard and North 40. The amount of growth that has happened to Los Gatos Boulevard over the last 10 years has affected the entire town of Los Gatos. Panera, Sutter Health, Swanson Ford, Bluebird Lane, Laurel Mews. Lots of those places got exceptions. Sutter Health got exceptions. Panera got exceptions. They all got exceptions, and look where we are now. Um, once again, I'm standing here begging you, do not approve the story poll exception for the North 40 development. The story polls that are standing do not even begin to show the true mass and height of the development. Those little orange flags need to be replaced with the large orange flags or netting so people can really see the height and mass and be honest of what this project is really going to look like. This project that does not fit the specific plan or the vision statement. By the way, everyone I know who had to put up story polls were living in their homes, and the wine depot actually closed for their story polls, and they did not get an exception for that. Um, our community members are not granted exceptions. I covered that. Um, thank you. I want to say... Um, you, thank you to the two council members who replied to my email. Not only am I asking the elected town council to listen to the residents, the heart and soul, the foundation of this community, but I'm also asking the staff to be honest, to stand up and to start listening to us as well. Um, and then I had one more little thing, just real quick. My, a lot of college kids in from college this last week. A lot of we have a very involved neighborhood. All of them flabbergasted. What is happening? And what do you mean they don't have to put all the story pulls up? Uh, everyone asking who to write to. And these are college students. So thank, thank you. you for your time. Thank you, Bruce. People just can't control themselves back there. Bruce McCombs. Bruce McCombs. Good evening, Madam Mayor, members of the Town Council. Thanks for letting me. Uh, Speak my piece. I live on the Kennedy Road. I've lived there for 44 years. Been a resident here all my life. My wife was a lifelong resident as well. Um, I'm 
keep my comments directed specifically to story polls as you've asked me to do. Um, this project requires that the town provide impartial objective recommendations regarding the story, story polls and specifically the North 40 project in general. Based upon the presentation we've received this evening from uh, members of staff, uh, it doesn't seem to me that the town is giving the attention and expertise that this project desires, and I'm specifically referring to the story polls and giving me and my wife and members of this community the opportunity to see what this thing is going to look like. And I'm not just talking about the first half, I'm talking about the whole thing. But again, confining my, my comments to, to the project as it's being proposed, these story polls have to be up. I, I really think everybody here knows that, and I think you must feel at some, at some level, we're all residents here, we want to know what we're getting. We, we don't want somebody to come in and say, well, this is kind of what we're going to get, and this is how we're going to show you, but we can't really show you. Well, it, a couple people have spoken already. This is a major project, major engineering project. Professionals have been hired. They uh, are required to do their job, and now the story polls can't be put up in a way that somebody can't. I'll go over there and do it for you. I'm serious, it's just not that complicated. Um, it can be done. And if the trees are going to be removed, why wouldn't they be removed so that we can put the story poles up? It sounds like convenience to me. Why was this house leased again? This project has been on the board for years. I just, I, I really, I don't want to point any fingers because I have no evidence to, to back me up, but my sense is this is about making it easy on the builder and hard on us. And I just, uh, we need the opportunity to see what's going on. So my proposal is this. I think we need to conduct a, an investigation, just a, a simple one-day approach to examine this thing, find out what's going on, find out how it can be done, how the polls can be properly put up, and put them up, and then give us a chance to look at it. That's all we're asking. Um, I just urge you to give, us, give this, uh, my idea, some thought. I, I think it's the right way to go. I think we need the opportunity to see the story polls in place. and see this building and this, this project uh, uh, shown to us in a way that is truly representative of what it's going to be, not just ask us to use our imaginations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Sam Weedman, followed by John Eichinger. I probably killed that one. And Chris Chapman. Good evening, uh, Mayor Specter and Council Members. It's Sam Weidman, by the way, 215 Carlester Drive, which is about two blocks away from Lark Avenue and Los Gas Boulevard. So we're basically right next door. Uh, I personally grew up in town of Los Gatos at 146 Wilder Avenue behind the Greyhound Bus Depot uh, back starting in 1946. So I've been here for 70 years, and I've seen pretty much just about everything that's going on. Uh, so I just want to read basically uh, what our concerns are, along with my wife, who's been here since 1958. We are extremely concerned that the developers of the North 40 property are requesting yet another modification to the story pool policy for Phase 1. As long as the residents of Las Gas, we believe not installing, not installing the story poles throughout the acreage is tantamount to buying a pig and a poke. It's impossible to hold an intelligent discussion concerning the scope of the development and the aesthetic impact of the community without the benefit of all phases being delineated by the story poles and the netting. This is exactly why the town of Los Gatos has a story pull policy in place. The policy is designed to avoid ambiguity when a development is proposed for our town. It's imperative that the site and scope of any project be as factually and visually displayed as possible. The residents and the business owners of the town of Los Gatos take the proposed development very seriously. Any request that benefits the developer and makes it harder for the residents, business owners, the planning commission, and the town council to make a decision beneficial to the town should be denied. Thank you. Thank you. John Eichinger. At least we know who the person is, right? Well, let's get it perfect. Oh, way to go. Thank you. John Eichinger, and uh, I live at 637 San Benito Avenue, a uh, 42-year resident of Los Gatos, real estate broker in town, and uh, have an office right on Los Gatos Boulevard, and uh, on s weekends I can't go to my office and I can't have customers come to my office in the summertime because they can't get there. Um, I'm just going to put this up quickly because I'm going to have to take it away and read it, but this is verbatim the, the uh, story poll policy, and it reads as follows. Story polls enhance the understanding of the project for town residents, staff, advisory bodies, and decision-making bodies. Story polls also provide a visual notice to the community of a forthcoming land use public hearing. 
So story poles are important. In college, I used to box. And left jab, I used to love the left jab. You can see that coming. What you don't often see is the right hook coming around to get you. And that's what phase two and phase three are going to be in this project. I talked to a developer at the planning commission, one of the representatives of the, of the developers at the planning commission. I said, where are the plans for phase two and phase three? Oh, we don't have any. I'm sorry, but I don't believe it. I don't believe that they don't have some sketches that could be shared with the community as to what is planned for the other half of that land that's there. And I think that these story poles are very important, should be put up, and we should be shared before this phase one project is approved. We should see what phase two and phase three plans will look like. Thank you very much. And thank, thank you. you for your service. You've got some difficult decisions to make. Thank you. Chris Chapman, followed by Maria Risto, followed by Jeff Lockridge. Hello, my name is Chris Chapman. I live at 201 Mistletoe Road. There we go, that'll work. I implore the town council to carefully review the letters that you have received to date regarding the story polls and also the comments that you have heard here tonight. The North 40 development is massive and the netting should reflect its true size. If the town allows this exemption, it will set a precedent for phase two and phase three. My question is, what's the backup tr plan? We can't control traffic, the beach traffic. What are we gonna do five years from now when we can't control the traffic on Los Gatos Boulevard? Thank you. Thank you. Maria Risto, Jeff Lockridge, and then Sandy Decker. Hi, Maria Risto, 85 Broadway. Um, having watched lots of projects and looking at story polls, I know that exceptions are granted under very specific situations. We had a huge exception granted to Netflix, and I think we learned from that what a mistake it was because most people did not understand that cherry pickers at opposite corners implied a whole building. In this case, we've got an awful lot of buildings going up, and the exceptions that were asked for had to do with time, had to do with safety of people that are living and working on this property that are not part of this application and will be impacted. So when somebody wants to put a second story on their own home, they're inconveniencing themselves to get a gain. I think implying, I think imposing a safety hazard or trying to shut down Bartlett Tree because they happen to be there and they can't get their, bill, their trucks in and out doesn't make sense. So I'm looking at this from the viewpoint that this is an emotional project. However, I walked around and looked at it. There's a lot of story polls. It looks like the developer is pointing out what the company they've contracted with. As far as I'm aware, almost everybody who puts up story polls, they don't do it themselves. A third party does it. So that would be a question to ask the developer whether their company is putting up the story polls or whether they're using one of the other companies that do this for a job. But I'm just concerned that people are so angry about this that they are not paying attention to what the points are. So I think that the story polls are showing a good part of the story. The entire point of getting the 3D model that is out there is to fill in the blanks, to get a bird's eye view, to see it. And I think we really need to focus on what are you seeing from the streets around there and the road and are we getting that and not is every single pole up there and if it's not we're going to ding you. There's enough other issues to deal with in the big picture. Thank you. Thank you. Jeff Lockridge. Hi, my name is Jeff Lockridge, 109 Paseo Laura. I'm a 38-year resident and I do have some definite uh, opinions about the North 40 and especially the story polls. And I would like to address at least one thing that is bothering me since even March 30th is the emotional nature of this whole issue. And um, I remember how I got involved seeing story polls go up and seeing uh, things happen in my end of town that I didn't like and I hope that what results from the the um, the uh, 
the opinions uh, that are being expressed at these meetings, I hope it, it gets some more involvement by the residents. Because what's happening now is the difference between realistic and unrealistic. Realistic is that if somebody wants to sell their land and build something on it, that's realistic. It's what everyone would want to hear to do. If they want to put a two-story uh, addition to their house, they think they almost have a right to do that. But now they say that the Yukis can't sell their land and put anything up on it except for a sports field or a park. That's unrealistic. I mean, and I don't, I'm sorry that they, they, they were asleep at the wheel, but this project has been going on for eight years, 12 years. I mean, it, it's not news to anybody. So the story polls, if you ask me, realistic. They're being put up by a third party. They're not being put up by, by Don Capobres. They are, the decisions made are from safety issues. From a safety standpoint, you don't want someone to get hurt. So I don't know why you'd want to put up a pole that was going to obviously fall down or is going to be right in the middle of somebody's driveway. And these people don't have anything to do with the application. They're just innocent bystanders at this point. So what I don't understand is exceptions like this are, t seems to be minor because the majority of the phase one application building development, the story pulls her up. If people, are, if people don't like it, they don't like it already. They're not going to not like it a little more or a little bit less if one or two polls doesn't go up. So, because I, I see the shaking of heads and I see how emotional everybody is about this. They're not worried that the, the extra story poll here or there uh, is not put up. They just want this thing stopped. And I don't think that's a good enough reason. So I think the exception should be granted. Thank you. If anyone wants to address us, please submit a card. I have two more cards. The next one, Sandy Decker. Sandy Decker, 45 Glen Ridge. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm going to address this from an exception standpoint. This project has simply been one major exception after another. This enormously impactful project has emerged almost in parallel with Grosvenor's proposal. This developer has been ever present at this, pro at this the process moved through our town process. They attended and spoke at length in each committee meeting from beginning to present. What, eight to 14 years, Jeff? The only 10, four that I know of. The town even seemed to be aided by the developer's constant suggestions and seemingly bottomless assets. Recently, the developer even appears to be partnering with the town on the town's website. When you call up the North 40 specific plan, the Grosvenor Project application map comes up. The town's website even gives the Grosvenor Summer Hill sales numbers. If that's not enough, the developer has also been allowed to hold marketing coffees in the, in the town council chambers every Thursday. Council, these are exceptions never granted to any developer I can remember in 20 years. So please, please, now another exception. This massive impact of this project needs to be completely visible. And the Los Gatos section is critical because of the traffic impact already. The poles need to be complete. Please, now that we all have seen the reality of this enormous project, do not let there be an appearance of any more exceptions for this developer. Do not grant the story poll waiver. Thank you. Shannon Susick, and it'll be followed by uh, Marcone or Marquine Smith. Evening, Mayor, Council. I don't know if you've noticed, but I have dressed for the occasion. I am wearing my orange netting, um, and I think I think the red. I uh, this. I totally agree with some of the, the speakers, and I was not going to speak tonight. Um, and then a couple words were said, and yeah, this is an emotional issue. It is. This, is, this impacts not just somebody that lives on Johnson Avenue wants to put on a second story. This impacts the entire town, not just our town, Los Gatos, Campbell, San Jose, people that go to Santa Cruz. But um, I have a couple of thoughts. One is that 
I don't really think they've already been granted an exception and I really don't think it's appropriate. I think that there are, I do see the logistics with a couple of the spots, but I think the majority of the people that are here tonight are concerned because Los Gatos Boulevard is not fully represented in those story poles. That is a major traffic area and you can't see them. You can't see the orange netting. So if it's not possible to put the poles up, then I think the plan should be, the application should be revisited by the Planning Commission. And let's, instead of tearing down those trees that are so high that we can't see the poles uh, right by the gas station and putting something else in, let's put in, let's put in our pocket parks in these areas that we can't see. Otherwise, let's put the poles up, let's put the orange netting on so that the full, uh, the full picture, the full story, as Cindy said, is told. Thanks so much. Thank you. Marquine Smith, my last card. If you want to speak, please submit a card. Else I will close the public testimony. Ms. Smith. I'll be really brief, too. I, I came over here from the JCC Zumba class, and traffic was really, you know, hard. It took me about 20 minutes to get here. I just want to mention, and a lot of people were looking for the story polls. I saw them all looking over in that direction. Um, I want to sec uh, second, third, fourth, fifth, everybody's, um, I, I want to support everyone who is supporting the complete story of the story polls being up because the, the purpose is to communicate and um, I, like many people, just got involved when I saw story polls getting up and then suddenly gave myself a really quick study because I've lived here 30 years and the North 40 was something like we heard about and everything. And um, I do not feel sorry for Grosvenor for having to put up storyboards. I just learned how to pronounce his French name. Um, he apparently has a 400-year time frame and, and unlimited resources. He is like the 68th richest person in the world with an estimated fortune from Forbes says this year it is 12 to 14 billion dollars. That's 12 to 14,000 millions. And he can certainly afford to find a way to put up storyboards on this um, community that he's trying to privatize. I'd like to make the point that the North 40 is almost the exact same size of the entire Almond Grove district in Los Gatos, which is 40 acres. And um, imagine if you were going to totally knock down Almond Grove and put up whatever the heck you wanted and, um, and not go house by house, building by building, story pole by story pole, and seeing whether it would fit in to the surrounding neighborhoods. I think we all need to see those story poles, and every single building that's anticipated needs one. And maybe if some of the buildings need to be rearranged to make parks, or if we want to save some of the trees. So, um, I mean, let's save the trees and put in parks there, exactly. So I didn't plan to speak either, so I'm not very, but uh, the good news is I'm brief. So. Thank you. All right, now this is my last card because I don't have another one after it yet. Lee Pennington. I'm Lee Pennington and I've lived in Los Gatos since um, 1972. I live at 135 Cali Margarita. Nice to see you all, and then on the other hand, it isn't, because I, I, the whole thing is confusing to me. It's nice to see you. I just, uh... so I have to stay on story polls. Um, obviously, story polls are needed, because everyone needs to know exactly what's happening. And I never knew there was a phase three until tonight. Someone said phase three, like, blows my mind. Wish I could ask a question, because I don't know if the model out there includes all the phases or not. It doesn't? That's just phase one? Oh. All right, please address the council. Sorry. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, so, in that case, uh, story polls, absolutely necessary. Um, second thing, whoever voted against this on the town council, I applaud you. For those who didn't, um, I need, it needs to be readdressed for multiple reasons that everyone has said um, time and time again. But uh, this is all new to me, and what concerns me the most is it's a public safety hazard because there's only one road out of there. It appears two roads into Los Gatos Boulevard, and you're butted by 17 on one side, Lark on the other, 
which has no road going into. And how are all those people and all those shoppers going to get out if there's a disaster? I don't know if it's if it's I'm simple minded and I don't see something someone else sees, but I see that the whole medical community in Los in in San Jose is is in trouble. Some of those people don't know. I talked to them today that what's going on. Some people do know what's going on. That is a medical emergency waiting to happen. This is a public hazard. It is a safety hazard. And I'd love for the council not only to approve the story polls, but to go back and reverse this to half the size. Thank you. Thank you. I have no uh, further cards. I will now close the public testimony portion of our public hearing. Uh, and, oh, that's not true. I do have one more speaker. It's called Mr. Capobrace, and you have five minutes. Don Capobrace, representing North 40. Um, again, this is an emotional issue. I realize that. Um, we're trying to do our, our best. So to address a couple things, the areas that we have conflict all on are because of tenants or residents. We don't know when, when I started this process in 2008, I couldn't tell you I'd still be standing here in 2000, or eight years later with a process. Um, we don't know when the process is going to end. So terminating tenants prematurely who've lived there for over 30 years doesn't make sense to us. I'd be willing to donate the rent that we get from that one tenant that we extended to any charity that you want to. It's not about money. It's about fairness to that person who has lived there for decades. Um, so, you know, if you see, and frankly, we've impacted the family that owns the bulk of the property by what has happened to their trees out there. So the conflict areas are not because we're trying to avoid something or to not tell the full story. I think the, fo the fact that f people have gotten as active as they've gotten over the last couple of months or month is great. It tells you your policy worked. We want very much to show you what's on Los Gatos Boulevard because, frankly, it's to our benefit because the buildings are 20 feet lower than what was allowed to be built previously. So it's to my benefit, to our benefit as a team, to show the story, the full story, on Los Gatos Boulevard. But we are balancing that with the businesses and the livelihoods of and the residents of people there. This is not my own home. If it was my own home, I'd put the story of polls up tomorrow because I'd be the one being put out. But when you talk to, it's emotional, when you talk to the tenants out there who are impacted by this, of getting in and out of their homes, when you talk to the businesses who are trying hard to find another place to go, who can't find another place to go in West Silicon Valley because of the real estate is so expensive for tree equipment, what am I going to tell that guy? I'm going to shut you down. And yeah, maybe we can write a check and maybe we make that go away, but is that benefit outweigh the cost of putting those businesses out? I don't think so. So this isn't about Grosvenor being greedy. This is not about us trying to hide the ball. It's a story, frankly, I'd prefer to tell versus all the other story polls that are out there. This is, these, are the, these are the important ones to us because over seven years of the specific plan process, we worked hard on the height. We ended up with 25 feet along Los Gatos Boulevard and on Lark lower 20 by 20 feet than any other building that's been allowed to be constructed on Los Gatos Boulevard today. And that was through public deliberation over years and years and years to come up with a height plan that made sense for everybody. So I want to tell that story more than any other part of the story um, on the North 40. So we're trying, but we are trying to balance that with, you know, people who have lived there literally for, I met somebody today, I lived there for 36 years. And the family has allowed them to continue living there. And we, we, don't, we don't know when this is going to end. So to terminate it today uh, doesn't make any sense. Um, that concludes my rebuttal. Okay, we have questions. Mr. Rennie. Thank you, Mayor Spector. Um, Mr. Capobres, I think I got it better that time. Don's fine. Um, <laughs> Don, thank you. Thank you for the effort um, you made after I spoke to you, but in my engineering sense, I keep trying to problem solve in my mind here, and some of the speakers have given me some more ideas. Um, it, it, you know, some people mentioned that the 10-day the story polls at Shannon and Los Gatos Boulevard work, so I started thinking, well, what if we um, made part of the story polls 
um, only need to be up for, say, 10 days like we did um, for that one. So, for example, um, the, the guy next to the tree company, could you put him in a hotel for 10 days? And could you have the tree company park their trucks down on the other end of the Yuki property for, for 10 days kind of thing? And I guess you've got two other houses maybe also. Um, can you uh, address that brainstorming idea? I know I didn't <laughs> give you any warning, but, you know, it's kind of a continuous <laughs> iterative process here. Uh, I mean, it's <clears throat> definitely a negotiation with the tenants out there. They have a lease that they're legally, were le legally obligated to, to, um, to uphold. Uh, it's quiet enjoyment. Uh, it would be a negotiation. I can't commit to it until we have a conversation with the tenants um, about that. I, I think the story polls that we have out there today in that particular area t tell the story. Our con my concern, as you alluded to when we did the walk, was on Las Casas Boulevard in particular. That particular building is, as we mentioned, probably over 100 feet deep into the site. Um, Market Hall is fully story pulled immediately adjacent to it. Um, the, you know, the, we do have corner, uh, two corners of that building already story pulled. You can get the idea of what that height might be, uh, you know, but I can't comment on, on whether or not we can relocate Bartlett or, or uh, uh, an occupant without having had that conversation. So, I mean, we've had continuous conversations uh, with Bartlett, that's for sure, and I know how difficult it is to, to, to move those trucks into a new location. Other questions? Sayak? Mr. Kapopris, who's doing your story polls for you? Is it a third-party contractor? Yeah, it's a group called California Story Polls, so it's a third-party contractor. Survey work is being done by our uh, survey team, McCann Sumps. Um, so they do the staking, verification of height, but the actual installation is California Story Polls. Do you happen to know if they've done uh, – actually, it's a question for staff, so I'll save it. Other questions for the applicant? Seeing none, thank you. I will now close the public testimony portion of the public hearing and move to the council for questions, motion, and Ms. Sayak starting with the question. Okay, so this is to staff. A um, lot of references to Artisan Wine Depot, well, the location where Artisan Wine Depot is. Do you happen to know who did those story polls? I believe the name of that company was Coastline Story Polls. But California Story Pulls Installer is a primary installer in, in, in Las Gatas. So you've worked with them in the past? Not personally, but they are responsible for a number of applications um, that I am familiar with. Okay. And so just remind me again the process. So the story, the, the footprint, the building designs come in. They design the, they build the story poles, and who goes out to verify whether or not the accurate height and mass and setback has actually been achieved? The applicant provides a certification from a licensed civil engineer or land surveyor. And um, then as they to then the location sub and height. And then they submit that to staff as part of the application that staff then reviews. Correct. That is, that is what is required prior to us uh, noticing for public hearing generally. Okay. Okay, thanks. Other questions? I have a Mr. question Rennie? for staff. Um, thank you, Mayor Spector. Um, about the trees at the back of the L-shaped building, which I think is called A1, um, what does it take to remove those trees? Don't we have to go through a tree removal permit and process and all of that if they were to run off and do that? Correct. Any tree removal of four inches or greater when there is a zoning approval associated with um, those in, with, with the application um, would require a tree removal permit. Um, generally, we don't like to issue those uh, to, for, for a pending application, so those are usually a condition of approval for a project. I think that answers it. Thank you. Other questions? All right. We're looking for a discussion. Motion? Well, while they're thinking, I just want to uh, thank uh, those individuals who testified this evening for uh, making the effort to limit your discussions to um, the story poll issue. Uh, I, I know that probably was a challenge, uh, but you did a good job, so thank you. 
Now I'm looking to the council again for a discussion or motion. Ms. Syok. Okay, I'll go ahead and start. Um, I'll provide some comments and then I'll make a motion and let's see if, where we go from there. Okay, so I understand the concern for the safety that the applicant has been has expressed tonight. Um, and having just gone through this with the corner lot that Artisan Wine Depot houses, we are trying to balance several needs, those of the current people that are there as well as what the actual owner would like to do. In that particular case, we are able to come up with a compromise that worked for the community. The 11 houses depicted were able to be built by the story poles and the Artisan Wine Depot, as well as Yoga Source, they came forward and they said, yes, it was a hardship, but could you at least extend it for these certain days? For Artisan Wine Depot, he asked that it be after the holidays, which made sense, Yoga Source after the holidays. And we looked at the calendar and said that it made sense to do it during a school school break because we knew so many kids actually happened to be there. I think in this particular scenario, it's difficult to understand what the hardships are for those that are actually there. There. And that's why I'd asked whether Tree Bartlett was present as well as the, the tenants. There may be a way we can help accommodate their needs, but without them here, it's, it's very difficult to do so. And I do agree that we do need to portray as accurately as we can the entire story. We've done it with as many of our projects as possible. So given that, I will... I could do two things. I could actually just um, move this to a date certain until we get more information from the applicant whether they can work with the tenants to come up with a solution that um, has them vacate the premises so that we can put the story poles up or we deny it and have the applicant work with the solution with staff that actually portrays it. I'm on the fence on those two and so I look to my commissioners um, what of the two actually are more favorable to them? Well, if you're looking to a council, uh, as opposed to the commissioner. Oh, I'm sorry, council. I know, you, you got your planning brain on. Um, I wanted to jump in now because uh, I do have uh, my thinking at this time. The staff report that we originally obtained on this uh, agenda item uh, was very sparse, and I had a lot of questions. Uh, and I couldn't get the answers from the paperwork we had. Uh, given the testimony today from the applicant and the additional documentation that we got, actually for me, right before this meeting, uh, I have more information. That additional information, uh, given the fact that story polls are very important to me, uh, where I would be going with this is I would like to know from staff uh, the reason for each exception being requested uh, and what alternatives there are. Uh, is there an alternative as to timing? Uh, it can only stay up for a month or whatever. Is there an alternative for location? Are there other alternatives? But I would like to know uh, if we go forward uh, what the reason is for each exception being requested. So that's where I am right now. Uh, any other discussion? All right, Ms. Jensen. Uh, I'm an advocate always of getting more information where it's possible. My only hesitation with continuing the matter is that the Planning Commission is meeting again on this on April 27th, and I would not want to change that date because it was announced publicly at the meeting and people following this know when it is. Um, so if there is a chance that we could get that information, that it comes back to the Council on April 19th, our next meeting, and that the Planning Commission meeting can go forward, then okay. If that's not possible, I wouldn't be excited about a continuance. Further discussion? Mr. Rennie. Thank you, Mayor Spector. So uh, I think as I've been kind of indicating, um, I, I like the additions that he's done to what's built called building B2. That's the most northern building um, That I'm really hesitant on the L-shaped building that's back behind enterprise um, 
I, I just feel like there should be some more uh, a way to, to do a better job on that building. There's, you know, a lot of it's not represented. I, I did go there. It is really in a hole. I know it's not going to be visible from Los Gatos Boulevard, um, but still, uh, you know, it seems to me if if council was willing to do a shorter one for some of these that you could you know park the trucks in you know some some other place for a short period of time of course it's going to cost some money um and then on the other two houses that are on los gallos boulevard um i know he's in, improved that but i was hoping for something all the way across the front so i'm i'm still looking for some more Im improvement on these thank you thank you miss jensen i just wanted to throw in uh just one more comment just generally it makes no sense to me given that what we have before us is an application uh, we have a plan approved that would guide how we look at an application but we don't have a, an approved application so the notion that we would take out trees which we may never take out depending upon what the decision is does makes no sense at all to me so I, I would not be looking to do that even if it meant that we might lose some poles it doesn't make sense to me to destroy perfectly good trees all right further discussion let me weigh on the on a couple things that have been uh, stated um, in looking for options and alternatives it could be for example that one of the options to see the buildings adjacent to the boulevard would be to remove the trees another and then another argument might be while well, you could remove the trees but why remove the trees when uh, the project might not get uh, approved that would be the kind of discussion I would be looking for for each of the exceptions uh, being requested with regard to um, the Planning Commission having currently having uh, a date um, I would not have the Planning Commission's date April 27th be the the um, item that uh, confines us council on what we do we have another meeting uh, prior to April 27th and so we could continue this matter uh, to that next meeting uh, and yes I know that we have other items on that agenda but uh, I think I'm going to look to Laurel I think that we would be able to fit this in we should be able to mayor um, there there may be some other adjustments that that would be needed um, depending upon the possible length and duration of the 19th hearing okay and that's what we do uh, we work that out so uh, I wouldn't uh, anticipate necessarily that the April 27th Planning Commission date would be impacted uh, that this could be moved to our next uh, council meeting and that we are not necessarily making any dictates on what is going to be done ie trees pulled out trees not pulled out uh, businesses moved businesses not being moved but that that information be provided to us by staff on each requested uh, exception but we don't have a motion miss Jensen I was going to say we don't have a motion um, so my motion would be that we continue this matter to April 19th uh, for staff to come back with to us with the reasons for each exception that has been suggested uh, incorporating the comments of the council uh, also I think that it's been clear and I don't know if staff would do the outreach or uh, Mr. Kapovers would do the outreach for the tenants and business owners as to the impact on their business whether it truly does uh, make it impossible or unsafe for them to work um, we did not hear anything about the existing medical buildings so I'm curious about that because I know that they get used frequently um, and I realize that, that the Planning Commission I appreciate the mayor's concern that Planning Commission shouldn't necessarily dictate what the Town Council does however uh, the special meeting on the 30th was impacted that the Commission couldn't take any action not that they could have because there was a lot of people talking but they couldn't take an action because they were pending waiting for uh, a decision from the council on this matter so it would be very frustrating I would think for people anticipating an April 27th meeting to have that happen again 
So I would hope that we can get all the information that we need to make a final decision on this so the Planning Commission can go forward on the 27th. So that's a long way of saying that my motion is to continue this to a date certain of April 19th. Uh, I'm going to second the motion to continue this to our uh, meeting of April 19th with staff uh, addressing uh, each of the exceptions uh, being raised. Is that okay with the maker of the motion? Yes. Discussion. Ms. Sayak. Okay, um, I will support it, but w what I'm looking for on the 19th is, that, is I want clear solutions. I want clear alternatives. Either it can be done or it can't be. And yes, we can list all the many excuses why it probably can't, but ultimately on the 19th, what I hope to do is make a decision based on all the information available. And, as for, and just in general, I want to make it very clear, and it sounds like the process is that Planning Commission hearings are scheduled once everything is deemed complete. And I, I don't understand how this process, I appreciate that we have, um, it's complex, and I appreciate that this was already advertised, but to have a hearing where people are not being able to comment on what is completely before them is not even a full hearing. And so I want to make sure, I understand there's a meeting on the 27th, but I'm willing to postpone that to make sure that we are actually looking at a complete story poll, story, how, storyboard, however much we want to describe it, so that when we do have this hearing, the most accurate comment can be made based on the observations available. Um, let me weigh in on this because when the Planning Commission, a special meeting of the Planning Commission, uh, was going forward and I was a, became aware that the story poll was still an open issue. Uh, I had the same concerns about the Planning Commission going forward even though it didn't have uh, everything that it needed as far as evidence. Uh, and I raised the issue with staff and received the same response that the entire council did uh, today. I am supporting the motion that we bring this back to the council on April 19th because I'm trying to uh, be reasonable and accommodate all interested parties. Having said that, I agree with the vice mayor that if this is not completed by, uh, by the council on April 19th, then I also uh, do, I also am not going to allow the Planning Commission's date of April 27th to dictate what we reasonably need to do on our end. Mr. Rennie. Thank you, Mayor Spector. I just wanted to add a, a comment. I realize our motion is really giving action items to staff, but um, I'm assuming, and so rather than assume, I'll, I'll say my thoughts that um, the developer will continue to try to problem solve to, to do a better better job and um, I'm expecting on April 19th that he may be able to provide us with some improvement or some more information. I know some of the action items for staff are to go talk to the residents, which he's probably going to need to be involved in anyway. So those are my comments. Thank you. Ms. Jensen. I just wanted to make uh, clear that as the maker of the motion, I indicated that there's reasons that I would like it to go forward on April 27th, but if it's not ready, it's not ready. And as long as there is full, clear, and adequate notice to everyone that is cares about this, everybody in town, um, <laughs> that there's going to be a change in that date, then okay, But because uh, I don't want to go forward before it's ready. However, I think if we've got that out there and people understand that it's there, we should try to do it if we can. If we can't, okay. But my motion was specifically not dependent upon that April 27th hearing. Those are just comments. Right, for the discussion, Mr. Schultz. I'll just clarify because the reason the Planning Commission went forward was part of my, my decision also. And that decision was made because you've heard that the notice was out there. We had already noticed it. There were many people that were going to show. And the reason why we did that is the only reason why that hearing was valuable is if, in fact, you granted the additional exception tonight. Then the, then the people that spoke saw exactly where the story poles were at and located and we could move forward with the deliberations. It certainly appears there's going to be additional requirements when this comes back on the 19th. If that is the case and there's additional requirements, 
then the planning commission that schedule will have to be continued because there would be not enough time to put those additional requirements up if in fact though at our next meeting you grant the exception completely then that meeting could go forward on the 29th that's the only way it could go forward is if in fact the exception is granted so in all likelihood if there are additional requirements that meeting would have to be can't be continued the public hearing would be completely reopened at the Planning Commission level and allow for the public to participate in it thank you further discussion or questions see none we do have a motion on the table uh, and uh, calling for the vote all in favor aye, aye. opposed passes unanim unanimously 4-0 uh, at this point our meeting is adjourned and thank you all